What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Um, today, I got a lot to talk about, man. I got a lot. So before we even talk about the heat letting us down, the Lakers toying with their food, Austin Rivers taking over a game. I, I, I had a rant about something, man. A lot of y'all were expecting an episode of Called Game Recap yesterday. And my apologies, something came up that didn't allow me to watch as much basketball as I normally do. And if I don't feel like I watched enough, I'm not going to force a video. You know what I'm saying? But three things happened yesterday that I have to talk about. I have to rant. I have to ramble. So give me a few minutes before we talk about today's slate of games, okay? First thing that happened, um, Russell Westbrook goes down with an injury. He's walking back into the tunnel, and a fan from D.C. decides to pour an entire thing of popcorn on Russell Westbrook's head. And if it wasn't for the training staff and those guards that were there, Russell Westbrook was uh, pulling the Steven Jackson, pulling the Metal World piece, and going into, going into the D.C. stands and smacking everybody. So <laughs> shout out to the trainers for holding him back. Inexcusable offense by the D.C. fan. The second thing that happened, we have this amazing series between the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks. Madison Square Garden is jumping. The Knicks win a game, and they're in the streets going crazy for winning the playoff game. But in the process of winning that playoff game, Trey Young is inbounding the ball, and a fan that is close to court side decides he wants to spit one of the biggest loogies I have ever seen in Trey Young's direction. And I don't care the circumstance. I don't care if you are my worst enemy. Spitting on somebody is the worst thing you can do. It literally is the worst thing you could do in my eyes. So that happened. And the third thing that happens that may not have been getting that much press and that much coverage is that the Memphis Grizzlies, they're in Utah, of course, for game number two. Uh, John Moran is in the process of having his best game of his NBA career, right? Like I said, I didn't get to watch as much basketball yesterday, so this is one game that I missed live, but I went back to watch it. John Moran is being unstoppable. They lose this game. John Moran doesn't travel alone. He's got his family there. So his family, his dad, and some other people in his family are cheering him on as they should. The man is having the best game of his young NBA career. And while he's cheering his guys on, Pops gets into a little altercation with a Utah Jazz fan. And this altercation leads to the Utah Jazz fan saying some inexcusable racist things towards John Moran and his family. Shout out to the teams because they found individual culprit and banned them for life. Amazing. But still, this is one day of playoff basketball. We have three inexcusable offenses from fans. Now, I'm not saying that this fan that dropped popcorn is speaking for the whole D.C. Uh, every uh, Washington Wizards fan. Same thing with Madison Square Garden. Same thing with the Utah Jazz fans. But these things happen, and it has to go away. If there's one thing you learn from me ever, ever, my job is to talk basketball. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. But you have to remember, it's just basketball, bro. It's a game. And I know we're deeply invested in our favorite teams. We're deeply invested in the league. But it is just basketball, bro. I see, I see way too many times that people end up in these big old crowds where, where like-mindedness happens and they lose themselves. But you know what? Actually, I take that back. I take that back. The three people that did these three things, they were assholes going into it. It don't matter if they were in a group mentality or what. These are bad people doing bad things. But I have to remind people, we are just doing, it's bouncing a little orange ball, bro. I know we use it to get away from our normal lives and it's great. It's a good outlet. But it is just basketball. You can hate Trey Young. You can hate Russell Westbrook. You can hate John Moran and his family. But they are still people that you don't really know. You don't know these people. As much as you follow them on social media, you don't know these people. These people have families and things. I'm, I'm always pro protect the players or protect the people. Like, it's it's so crazy that it has to even be said. But the fact that somebody decided that he wanted to and try to spit at somebody that he doesn't even know. Oh, because Trey Young has had two good games against your favorite team. Because Trey Young told you to shut up at the loudest ring. That's my rant. It's just basketball, y'all. And even to a lesser scale, we see stuff like this on Twitter all the time. And part of it we're going to talk about today when we get to that Lakers game. Let's start off by talking about the Miami Heat. Because just like that, they are down 3-0. And another abysmal performance from the Miami Heat. Another performance that makes you really mad. And listen, I ain't, vote, I ain't going for either of these two teams. I thought this was about to be one of the better series. When you think about what happened last year, right? The Miami Heat punched the uh, Milwaukee Bucks in the face. You kind of figure the Miami Heat are basically the same team. They, they lost Jay Crowder. They tried to supplement him with, with Iggy. They tried to supplement him with, with a little bit of uh, Trevor Reza. And I know the Milwaukee Bucks made a couple moves here, but you expected this series to be more than the 3-0 Series. And I saw somebody on Twitter that was like, oh, what a surprise. The team with a negative net rating the whole season is actually bad. Which is, uh, I just, I don't know, man. I, maybe we, we just got, we got, we got confused by the bubble run. 
That's what it is. And I'm not one of the people to call them bubble frauds. I've been seeing people Photoshop them on like bubble guppy things. That's crazy. Y'all, y'all are going a little bit too far. But for them to be three games into this, Jimmy Butler at one point in this game had like half of the team points early in the in the uh, first half. But in the second half, he didn't do a thing. Bam Adebayo is on a um, um, missing poster. I don't know what happened to Bam Adebayo this 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 series specifically because the whole season he's been good. He didn't make the All Star game, but he's been good. He's been a Defensive Player of the Year conversations. He's always been been solid. But three games in, this man hasn't impacted the game positively at all. At all, and I'm super excited to see what this off season looks like for them because if I'm not mistaken, they have a max spot. They have the Heat culture that people are always talking about, but is that real? Are we questioning the Heat culture now? I want to give a lot of love to the Milwaukee Bucks, man. Giannis, before the series even started, was like, I don't know if things are going to be different. I don't know. He didn't get too high. He didn't get too low. And you know what? He probably has the same mentality right now because though it is a 3-0 series and it's like a 97% chance that you're going to win this series, he still has to know that, hey, we want to put our foot on their nest. Don't get them a single game. And if the Heat walk out of here with no games, oh, that's rough, bro. That's really, really rough. Drew, Drew Holiday has been the absolute X, X factor that everybody thought he was. Them giving up all the picks, them giving up players, it, it doesn't matter at this point because Drew Holiday has already cemented himself in these three games as, as the reason, as the, the saving grace of the M Milwaukee Bucks. Because if you do not remember, after the Drew Holiday trade, Giannis was like, you got me. I'm in. <laughs> Deal. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. So you get Drew Holiday, who's been amazing for you. You extend him. You get Giannis, of course, to come back, and now you have all these pieces around them. They're a more complete team. And this is going to sound crazy because of all of the things that happened with Coach Bud throughout the regular season. And last year, I was calling for his head last year because he made literally zero adjustments in the series last year. Um, making adju Not adjustments in the series, but we saw a team last year that rarely switched anything to a team that is switching everything and being dominant. This defensive performance that they've put on through these three games – has been legend. I don't know if the statistics are going to tell you this, but it feels like it is, is legendary. They won by 30, and they didn't have a good offensive game. You hear me? They won by 30, and they didn't perform well on offense until we got like to the, to the fourth quarter and they started to pick it up. But until uh, uh, up until that point, they didn't even have a good offensive game. I'm excited about this next series. I'm call it's a wrap. I mean, 3-0, it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? Um, if, the, if the Heat can make a push and make a comeback, that'd be crazy, but... You you don't come back from 3-0, especially with this type of momentum. I mean, it's it's insane. Shout out to the Bucs. I'm excited for the next series when they go against the Brooklyn Nets. Next game, let's talk about this Lakers versus Suns game because things got really, really chippy. And I'm already seeing things on Twitter between the fan bases going at it, this and that. Because before we even talk about the stuff that happened that mattered um, within the game, Devin Booker fouls out and, and the last foul... Um, Dennis Schroeder is in the air. Devin Booker, Devin Booker pushes him, and Jay Crowder kind of gives him a shove too. And in my eyes, I've seen people call, call it on both ways, and it's just been a few minutes since that game is wrapped up. I've seen people call it on both ways. That is a dirty slash bad play from Devin Booker. I love Devin Booker. I even like Jay Crowder. But I have to call a spade a spade. Devin Booker did not go for the ball whatsoever and saw a player in a vulnerable position and made it even worse. Inexcusable. So I'm okay with the ejection. You have to send a notice. I know these two teams are chirping at each other. It's the playoffs. This, I think it's what Anthony Davis says. The playoffs, they're chirping at each other. That's all cool. And even the occasional hard foul is cool, but a defenseless guy in midair, I, that's, that's not cool to me. That's not cool to me. And I, like I said, I want the Phoenix Suns to be competitive. I want the Phoenix Suns to win this series. But the fact that Chris Paul can't play is the real detriment to the team, obviously. I mean, he was the all-star player. He's the captain. He's the guy that's in MVP conversations to, to some people. Um, and he just can't play. I mean, he ended with 27 minutes played. He's not shoot. I watched Chris Paul for a decade. He he very rarely, unless he had a super big defender on him, he very rarely goes to a different shot, like a shot form. Since his shoulder injury, every shot has looked different. He hasn't even felt confident enough to attempt a three in the whole series. The entire series, Chris Paul has not attempted a three because I don't know if he feels confident in that shoulder. Now, he did look better today than he did in game number two, and maybe there's a bit of optimism for them for game number four because game number four is a do-or-die game. I know people come back from 3-0, but I, I find it hard to see. I, I don't see LeBron and Anthony Davis and company blowing a 3-1 lead. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. So they need to go into L.A. and win game number four, and hopefully by the time this game happens, Chris Paul is healthy. 
this is a bad game for Devin Booker. The, the two players that came to show up was was uh, DeAndre Aiden and, <laughs> and Cameron Payne. I always wanted to call Cameron Payne the tank commander because of all the years he spent in Chicago and how, how bad he was here. But he's so much better now, man. He was better than Chris Paul today. And he was one of the reasons why they had that many comeback in this game because he had a couple shots. He was diving on the floor. He was getting steals. He was everywhere today. I love to see a player out there really playing hard because, I mean, I guess his next contract's not really promised. But after this playoff push, maybe it is. Um, Jay Crowder, absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible today. Man shot some uh, uh, shot some things that, well, didn't even look like they had a chance to go in. I was seeing the numbers circulate on Twitter. He, at, he was like 2 for 30 or something from the 3 this entire series. Not the Jay Crowder man you know. Not the Jay Crowder that we got last year that helped the Heat get to the finals. He's been, he's been really, really bad. And uh, it doesn't help that he's also guarding LeBron. And LeBron, Anthony Davis, and the Lakers – have won the mental game against the Phoenix Suns. And this is this is from my perspective. I don't know how true this is, but the fact that you had a flagrant foul that, that ended in two ejections kind of shows, in a, in a game that was already out, kind of shows that the Phoenix Suns kind of lost the mental battle, at least in this game. I'm not calling it for the series. Um, and the part, part of the way the Lakers do that is that they clamp you up. It's hard to score on them, bro. They um uh, Devin Booker got a good dose of KCP before he went out with his injury. He got a good dose of Wesley Matthews and a little bit of Ben McLemore, and that was enough to throw him off of his game. Uh, Jay Crowder was doing all the yapping to LeBron, and LeBron is yapping yapping back, and then LeBron was like, you know what? Give me four isolations in a row with Jay Crowder, and I'm going to just score. I'm going to get the crowd involved. I'm going to get the bench involved. One of the greatest things I see with this Lakers team and why they're still so very dangerous is a guy like Montrezl Harrell, who um, was a six-man of the year last year. He's been a big part of this team up to this point. Is get his D getting DMP's coach decisions, but he's still on the bench yapping at the opposing team. He's still dancing. He even got a technical foul, if I'm not mistaken, for, <laughs> for just talking trash or whatever he was doing. So they have this team camaraderie that you cannot beat whatsoever. And, and one of the main things that I see with this Lakers series is, like, the Suns don't have – a big other than DeAndre Aiden. Now, DeAndre Aiden has been the most consistent player in this entire series, 100%, 100%. But if DeAndre Aiden is not playing, and in this game he had to play 41 minutes, it's just like free cheese. Frank Kaminsky got seven minutes of play, and it was a bad seven minutes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, And then the Lakers have technically four centers. They have four centers that they can run out there. Like I said, Montrez is not playing. Anthony Davis, I'm classifying. Um, uh, Andre Drummond, again, another good game. There's two games in a row where Andre Drummond is starting to find himself a little bit. As long as you're not giving Andre Drummond his own personal feeds, like giving him post touches, he's fine. You know, catch some lobs, get some offensive rebounds, you're good. And then, you, of course, Marcus Gasol getting in back in the rotation. They have so many bigs. It's just not a good matchup for the Phoenix Suns that only have DeAndre Aiden as good as DeAndre Aiden has been um, in this series. So um, that that's a game. That, the worst thing about these things, though, and I think I mentioned this on the last episode of the Call Game Recap, is that they're starting these games so close together that they make they make you pick. In the regular season, I have no problem watching multiple games because you don't have to give your whole attention on a Cavs versus, I don't know, Pistons game. I can have that just up and checking scores and looking for moments. But we're talking about playoff games. I want to be able to sit down, dissect, analyze every single minute of every single game. But with the Nets or the Nuggets versus uh, Trailblazer game starting 30 minutes later, I didn't get to watch as much of this game as I really wanted to. And it was the best game of the day according to like the la like the final score. It's really unfortunate uh, because I have a method that remedies this. But if I do this method, then we won't get recaps anymore. Like my guy Jay Skeets does it. He's like, hey, I'm going to focus on Lakers versus Suns tonight, and I'm going to wake up early tomorrow morning to watch Nuggets versus Blazers. I would do that 100%, but I know y'all like these recaps the night of. You know what I'm saying? So let me let me break down what I saw because I tuned in the last six minutes, basically after the Lakers game was over, um, and it was Austin Rivers taking over. It was Austin Rivers taking over. Jokic gets that last bucket. But the crazy thing is, bro, at one point, I think this is like a 12-point game with like a minute and a half to go. The Trailblazers decided they want to hit, they wanted to hit more threes in the last minute than they did in the entire game. Dame, CJ, Melo had some moments in that fourth quarter. But at the end of the day, didn't matter. And you know, I was on the edge of my seat because I saw the Portland Trailblazers do this before. Against my favorite team. They did it against us earlier this season. We're like, yeah, it's a nine-point game with a minute to go. It's a foul game. Oh, you miss a free throw? 
Dame go hit a shot. Oh, you missed two free throws? Dame go hit a shot. Oh, we caused a turnover. Dame go hit a shot. And then against us, Dame hit the game winner. But he didn't get the opportunity today because with – um with uh who who fouled out? Yusuf Nurkic fouled out of the game. Now you got Robert Covington as the center, and Jokic just overpowered him for the offensive rebound tip up. Boom, bada bam. Uh, MVP player makes MVP play, and they end up winning this game. And that gives them a 2-1 lead. They take home court advantage back from the Portland Trailblazers. And, again, this is one of the gr- one of the greater series. We have two MVP caliber players going head to him uh that's pretty much all i have for today let me know what you think about this whole fan situation i don't think there's a a fix to it because 99.9 percent of the fans that were in attendance to all of the games so far this year have been great they've been cool um but it's just that 0.1 percent or whatever of people that just take it too far take it too far like even i even tweeted you gotta love braun it's okay to not like braun i was just tweeting for myself gotta love braun because when he was toying with jay crowder I had, I got flashbacks. I love when LeBron is being great, right? And then um, I just saw some some very disgusting comments under my tweet about LeBron. And it's not a LeBron-centric tweet, but the fact that you would say, like, oh, I want to see X player tear their ACL, that's 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 just very wild to me. Um, and it wasn't – I don't want people to think it was a – it wasn't even a Suns fan. It was just somebody that hates LeBron, <laughs> you know? Um, it's just – it's very weird to me. It's very weird our activity. See people as people. And I think everybody gets along. <laughs>